Hello, hello YouTube and welcome to another one of my Shopify Liquid tutorial videos. Today, we're going to be looking at how you can use control flow in Shopify in order to show certain parts of your HTML or Liquid templates and not other parts, depending on your templating logic. So just like in any programming language, when you use if or else statements, you can run certain code or not other code. We can do the same thing in Liquid so that we can show certain parts of our template or hide certain parts of our template, depending on variable states, booleans, whether something equals to a certain string or not. So we're gonna look through how you can do this in Liquid. So let's jump into the code. Okay, so working with Liquid Control Flow, we have a couple different control flow statements that we can use. The first one we're gonna look at, which would be your most basic, is the if statement. So we use this tag syntax, okay? These are all called tags, what we're looking at here. And tags are what we can use to write the logic into our pages. So these tags don't show in the page, they just are used to denote the logic. So tags are surrounded or t are made up of the squiggly brace, percent symbol, then percent symbol, closing squiggly brace. Anything between there will not be shown in your page. That is logic that is written in liquid. So we would say if, and then we need whatever our, whatever we're evaluating. So in this case, we'll say page.title. Okay, so we're getting an object from Shopify, which is page. And if you're curious what objects you have access to in Shopify, you can go on to the Shopify developer documentation and under their theming, you can see all of the objects that they have available under the liquid reference. So if we look at page.title object, which should give us the title of this page, and since it's the about page that we're working with, we would say if page.title is equal to about, then we'll do something. So we need to close out the if, so end if, and that just says that this is the closing tag for our if statement. So anything between the opening if and the closing if is what will be shown if the statement evaluates to true. So if the page.title is actually equal to about. So in this case, we'll say the page title is about. Now, if we save that, we'll get the page title is about showing up in the page, right? Because this if statement is evaluating to true. So on the opposite side of things, we can actually use something called unless. So we would say instead of if here, we would say unless, and then we would have a closing end unless. Now this will show it, show whatever's in here, unless this is true. So if this is true, it won't show what's in here. So in this case, if we save it, it won't show that content anymore. So unless is the opposite of if, okay? So if you need to check if something is false, then you would use an unless and it would show you the value in between if it's false. Now, that might be a little confusing because it's sort of backwards to an if statement, but it's one way that you can use a control flow statement without having to change the operator that you're using to check your condition. So that's the if and the unless control flow. Now we also can do else ifs and else's just like you would use in any other programming language. So we could say in this case, if the page.title is equal to about, and then we could say, we would show the page.title is about. Then we could also have here another tag that says else. And then here at the end, we still need to have our end if. Okay, so the else's go inside of the if tags and between the else and the end if we could say the page title is not about right because if it's true it'll go here if it's false it'll go to the else so if we save this now we get the page title is about because yes it is equal to about now if i were to change this to i don't know let's just say home and save that it'll say the page title is not about okay because it's hitting the else statement here now, we also could have an else if. So if we wanted to have three sort of different ways that this can flow, we could say percent else if, percent closing bracket. Now notice there's no E on the else if, it's just E-L-S-I-F, okay? So pay attention to that. And then between the else if and the else, we could put something else. So 
sorry, where we have to add our logic here for the else if. So we can say else if page dot title, or actually let's use theme dot name. So that's another object we can access is the theme. And we'll check if the name of the theme is equal to debut, which is the theme I'm using, the default Shopify theme. And then we'll say the page title is not about, but it's theme is debut. Okay, and then down here we can say the page title is not about and the theme is not debut. And if we save that over here, we'll see it. We'll see the page title is not about, but its theme is debut. So we get the page title is not about, but its theme is debut. So it's printing out our middle statement here because the page title is actually about it's. So in this case, we're sorry, <laughs> this should be about, since I changed it to home, the statement should actually say if the page title is not home, but its theme is debut. So if we save that, there we go. The page title is not home, but its theme is debut. So we're checking if it's home, it's not. So the page title is not home, but its theme is debut because theme.name is equal to debut. And then we could also hit this else here if we were checking, let's say the page.title is not home, but the theme is not, I don't know, fairy tale. Um, say we're checking for the theme called fairy tale, right? And if we run that, if the theme name is equal to fairy tale, so it's not, it's, it's equal to debut. So it'd say here, the page title is not home and the theme is not fairy tale. The page title is not home and the theme is not fairy tale. Okay. So that's how you can use the three different types of control flow, the if else, if, and else inside of liquid. Now there's a couple other things you can do. You can also use case statements. It's called a case slash when, where you're, it basically can check a bunch of different cases. That's sort of more advanced. We're not gonna cover that in this course, but just know that it is available to you and you can find that in the control flow documentation uh, on the Shopify website. But you can also use multiple conditions. So instead of just checking one condition here, uh, we don't need to just check one. We can also check uh, a second condition in this if statement, right? Just like you would in any programming language, you could have an and or an or. So in this case, we could say if the page of title is equal to home and the theme dot name is equal to debut. Okay. Then we could print out the page title is home and the theme is debut. And if we save that, We run it, we get nothing. So theme.name equal to debut, page.title equal to home. Because, so we get nothing because the page.title is about, it's not home, right? So if I change this to about, now both sides are true. So this does print out uh, the page.title is, sorry, this should say about. The page.title is about and the theme is debut, okay? Now, if one of them is incorrect, like we just saw, then it won't print out because it's an and, right? But we could also make this an or. So if I put this back to home, we could say the page dot title is either home or the theme is debut. And then here we're gonna change this to an or. Okay, so if I save that now, it's gonna print out the page title is either home or the theme is debut. So we know it's not home, so this is actually false, but this part is true. So theme.name is equal to debut, so it prints this out, right? Now, if both of these were false, if we had our fairy tale theme name back here and we ran this, nothing would print out. That's how you use multiple conditions in Liquid with your control flow. So that's pretty much everything we need to cover for control flow, I hope that helped. Thanks for tuning in to another one of my Shopify Liquid tutorial videos. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you learn a little bit more about Shopify Liquid templating, then feel free to leave a thumbs up on the video and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you wanna catch more of our Shopify Liquid tutorial videos and future development tutorial videos that we're gonna be doing here. Thanks, have a great day.